No, I don't think plastic death is that challenging. On the surface, it seems like it's gonna expect a lot of the listener, and in many ways it does. Plastic death is very intricate, has vocals that aren't traditionally good, and it's got shifts in tone that are abrasive and sometimes even unpleasant. I found the second Glass Beach album to be very approachable and welcoming, and I'm not trying to gatekeep what is or isn't a challenging album, I'm just trying to convince someone who maybe is off-put by pieces of plastic death that this is a challenge that I think you can handle. Plastic Death has an immense scope. It's one of those albums that feels more than music, like it's almost cinematic. <laughs> Bear with me. It's also the perfect opportunity for a YouTuber to be pretentious when reviewing an album. This album is a journey that you have to commit to, and I hope you do, because I think it's worth it. It's also one of the few albums where I almost feel like I have to give a spoiler warning before talking about it. So I'm about to spoil a lot of the best parts of the album. This type of sound isn't something that I'm always in the mood for, so maybe it was just luck that before this came out, I was listening to a lot of teen suits, a lot of topiary creatures. So I guess it was just a happy coincidence to put me in the right headspace for a new Glass Beach album. I've listened to this album a lot of times since it came out, and it's not mainstream, but it's also not an album where saying I like it feels like one of those I'm not like other boys flexes. And that's because of Plastic Death's approachability, which I think is one of the strengths of this record. Sometimes experimental and challenging records can border on unlistenable. But if you told someone that you liked Glass Beach, or especially Plastic Death, they're not going to look at you and say like, how can you possibly like this? This is unlistenable garbage. When trying to put together my thoughts on this album, I kept coming back to the phrase, it's more than that. Like, this is an expansive record but it's more than that. This sounds like a song that could be on the radio, but it's more than that. This is a six minute intro, but it's more than that. Plastic Death tries very hard to go above and beyond. It does a lot. Maybe it's overproduced. Maybe it's maximalist. Maybe it's over the top and try hard, but none of those are criticisms of this album for me in any way. In fact, that mentality of doing everything you can kind of saves the vocals on this record. Like I said before, the vocals on this album aren't going to be for everyone, but what the vocalist lacks in any way is made up for by pure ambition. It's the epitome of making the most of what you've got. These vocals are fed into some machine or program that twists and contorts and compresses and expands these vocals in every way possible that makes it very interesting to listen to each song in this one hour runtime. Couple that with the abundance of ideas elsewhere on this record, in the drums, in the synths, in the guitar work, and it makes sense why maybe the vocals take a back seat and are sometimes hidden, obscured, and unintelligible on Plastic Death. That could be the main issue that a lot of people have with this record is the vocal performance and the unintelligibility of the lyrics on this record. Often the vocals are so muddy and distorted and buried in layers of instrumentation and synth that you just can't make out what the vocalist is saying. There's themes on this album about being hidden and being temporary and even the opening track's title, Celiocanth, fits into that theme. So why not bury the vocals to add to it? it just makes sense. Because sometimes on albums, like pop albums especially, where the vocalist is the main draw of the band, uh, the vocalist will sound very stationary, right in the center for the whole runtime of the album. And that's just not the case with Glass Beach. And that's not a bad thing at all, but on Plastic Death, Jay's vocals are like, omnipresent and ethereal and everywhere. It's a very interesting creative choice, and it's what I mean when I say that Jay is doing everything they can with what they have, for the vocals on this record. The vocals are layered on this album as if they're an afterthought, but when I dig into the lyrics, I find that they're really the beating heart of Plastic Death. I mentioned before that this album seems cinematic, and I say that because this album feels like more than just a collection of instruments. It feels like a place. It feels like a setting in a movie. I'm talking about the birds chirping and bubbles popping and static, and sometimes it sounds like wings flapping or little hooves running across the wooden floor. At times, it even feels like you're about to collect a power moon in Super Mario Odyssey. It's a perfect concoction of complex and simple ideas on this album, like where instruments are sometimes competing with each other and then at a moment's notice are playing in perfect harmony. It's really interesting to listen to. I really enjoy the guitar-driven tracks because it's what I'm comfortable with, and especially parts on The CIA, which is probably my favorite song on this album. Amidst moments of searching for a dictionary to figure out what the heck some of these words mean, 
I latched onto an uncommon word that I did recognize because I was so deep in Tears of the Kingdom lore, and that's Ouroboros. It's the depiction of usually a serpent eating its own tail in a circle. And it's an image that captures Glass Beach's critiques of society as well as the themes of their album Plastic Death. There's moments on this album where a song will build and build and then explode with complexity and layers, and the chaos will just eat itself. I think of the closing track, Abyss Angel, with frenzied and almost aimless guitars and vocals competing against each other, and then it just dissolves. It's a fitting resolution to the opening minute of the album, which is a very compelling start to Plastic Death. It opens with a vocal recording of what I assume is one of the band members talking about the idea of temporary art. And from there, the album very deliberately explores that idea especially with the opening track, Celiocant, but also on the song Rare Animals, which tells the story of a plane hijacker who disappears from the earth after completing their biggest score. The idea of temporary art juxtaposes the album's title as well. I found the themes that Glass Beach explore in Plastic Death very compelling, from the imagery of a Celiocant, or being hidden, or art being temporary. They gave me a lot to think about and added a common thread that they weaved between these songs, that made them a lot more interesting for me to listen to. And I'll be honest that I was expecting a really big payoff at the end of Plastic Death. Glass Beach seems like they're being purposefully obscure, misdirecting our attention, and hiding behind complexity, but there's no grand reveal. The snake just eats its own tail, and the final moments of the album is everything just dissolving. Perhaps the biggest gut punch that this album could have delivered was actually something that was impossible, and that after listening to it, it would just fade from existence so that this album could be temporary art instead of being about temporary art. I love this album, but I'm more excited to hear what you all think of it. Let me know in the comments and we can talk about it. I'll see you down there.